Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. It's been a little while since I did an episode of this, I th if, at least it feels like it, and I think I've done quite a lot since then. So as you might remember, at the, um, in the last episode I was talking about how I was having all kinds of resource shortages. There wasn't anything like enough plastic coming up here, although that's now picked up a little bit. There was, I was having problems with iron on the belts as well, and all kinds of other things like that. And it was all just creating, creating various issues for the, uh, for the base. So I've, I've, I've made some improvements. Firstly, let's talk about iron. So I've put in this, um, I've upgraded this to a red belt all the way through here. And it's now, well, it, it's completely backed up at the moment, but that's mostly because I'm not doing any research. As you can see, these, um, these two, these, this belt here with all the research packs in it has filled up and backed up completely. But when I did that, it was, it helped, it helped a lot because it doubled the amount of iron that was coming through. But it still wasn't really enough. I was still having serious throughput problems. And also, and it was compounded whenever I started make, started doing massive out massive um, belt construction things that was causing problems as well. It looks like I'm now running and run, I've run out of sulfur as well, which is interesting. So, oh yes, I know why that is. I'll get to that in a moment. So I upgraded this to a red belt. I had another belt coming along here. It's also a red belt, and then they're they're being merged here, which is helping quite a lot. What's getting destroyed? Uh, okay, it's just a turret in a in a coal mine. That's that's fine. I can ignore that. They're getting merged here onto the one belt because the theory is that by here most of this has been used up by ammunition or other things. So that's fine. Uh, there, and Yeah, there's a, a reasonable amount there, but in order to s properly fix it, I put in some extra stations up here. So I've got an iron drop station up here in this sort of top part of the, of the base, feeding directly onto the bus over here. Now there's two belts coming over here at the moment, uh, and that's because I thought I might need more than just one at some point. I might, I could even merge these and turn it into a single red belt. So it's there for a little bit of future proofing, and I've done the usual sort of thing here with having um, the three, three train unload, uh, station unload things. Uh, no, six, sorry. Six, six, six wagons being unloaded into chests, being put onto uh, three belts by through with these mergers, and then a, uh, a balancer here to make sure they all get used up at about the same rate. So that's yeah, that's generally pretty good. It's, we've now got plenty of iron around here, so that's that's okay. Um, the plastic problems, I've I think I've stop blank, stop getting blown up. I think yeah, I need. I need more turrets down here. I need to sort out the biters. There's lots of things like that. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment, though. So yes, plastic construction. Plastic. Down here we had um, oil being brought into these uh, these tanks here. Uh, these, no, nah, they're not very full. So oil's being brought in as fast as we can make it, which isn't very fast. There aren't very many oil patches around, which is a bit, a bit annoying, and it's just not coming in particularly quickly. So I was having trouble with the um, with the plastic production and the sulphur production. In fact, this is still running rather slowly, which is odd because my next thing I did was up here. I've got all these ranks of um, oil refineries, and these are turning um, these are turning coal and a small amount of uh, heavy oil into more heavy oil, light oil, and petroleum gas. So the idea is you need a little bit of the heavy oil to, to kickstart these, which means you can't just start with them. You need to you need to start off with the um, with with the normal oil refining first, and then advance onto this. But essentially, this is just a way of turning coal and a bit of water, but water's free. So basically, you're turning oil into into um, into the various types. Try again. You're turning coal into the various types of oil, and then through this system up here, I'm converting all of that down into um, into, into petroleum gas. Um, however, I clearly don't have enough of these machines running because uh, these pumps are running flat out. There's not, um, and these machines here just aren't able to convert it all into um, it, crack it all into the lighter products. So I'm still short of petroleum gas. So I'm going to need to go up here and maybe. Put in an, another. I can copy and paste this. Put in another set of it. I do wonder if the problem is that there, there are two possibilities for the problem here. Now, see, the thing is about liquids and and gases as well, but fluids in general is it's very difficult to tell where the bottlenecks are because we've got this pump here that looks as if it's I don't know. Is that running flat out? It's, it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, it's not. Ah, there's a pumping speed on the right hand side there. So it's not running flat out. Okay, that's that's. But is that because of the pipes, or because the, um, or because it just there just isn't enough being used? I don't actually know because you can't with a belt. You can tell at a glance whether it's full, whether it's got stuff on it or not, um, and how fast it's moving, whether it's moving at full speed or not. 
with a pipe you can't tell you can look and see i can go yes this pipe is basically full it's 90 something percent full and these machines are all running so i guess that means that there's more bandwidth available in this pipe and if i just put more and more of these machines in further and further up and just extend this these columns forever up here then it'll go faster and it'll produce more of the light light oil and then more of the petroleum gas I hope that's the case, because uh, that's probably what I'm going to end up having to do. Uh, but why is everything getting destroyed? Oh, it's up. that's just where I was looking as well, and that's not that's not covered by my robot ports. I'm going to need to come in and sort this area out because there's a lot of destruction happening up here. So in theory, this is going to produce me a lot more of the uh, petroleum gas, and therefore from that, a lot more of the um, the plastics and then the sulphur. And when this was working a bit more smoothly, which by, um, by which I mean it was running through the buffer I built up in this tank up here, um, all of this was, these were all running flat out and I had almost three belts of plastic coming out, so that was pretty good. Those are then getting fed into a station down here, as, as you expect, and so is the sulphur. Um, now, the sulphur, as you can see, there's plenty of it, but the problem is down here, I had this, um, I had this little train running for a while and it was pulling in, the, bringing the sulphur down here. Um, and it didn't really isn't really compatible with the um, with the full size station I've got up here, so I need to upgrade that. That's something I'd sort of completely forgotten about. So yeah, I'll do that at some point. Um, right, as in carrying on with the sort of supply issues, I've built up another spur of rail up here, and there's another oil um, oil mine, for want of a better word, up here. That's um, well, is is get, is getting oil in, but it's again. There just isn't enough of it, which is why I switched over to doing the uh, the coal liquefaction. Another copper mine as well, because again, not enough coal, uh, not enough copper. There's another patch here that's a decent size, so I can ex expand out to that one at some point when I need when I need a bit more. But actually, the other thing I needed was iron, and um, so I made a bit of a video here showing the um, show, showing the sort of construction of this because I got a bit of a bit of feedback between the la uh, since the last couple of episodes. Uh, one of the one of the things was that um, I should do a bit more showing of actually building things. Uh, so I've, I've done a bit of a, a bit of an ex excerpt with this, um, with the, showing how I built this mine up. So after obliterating the biter nests with the artillery, I can then come in and drop in my standard uh, blueprint here. The uh, roboports will then start, robot, robots even, will then start building bits of it. Now the most important thing to be putting together here is the solar, so you've got enough power to keep the, uh, the actual main roboport running. You can then go in and tidy it all up a bit, make sure all the the mines are in the right places, you've got all the right belts, and then and you can also then fill in any gaps with additional solar if you need to as well. And that gets you the sort of the basic shape of the mine. Link everything up. Make sure once again there's enough sol enough solar for the um, to keep the, to keep everything running while it's building. And then once once you've done that, you can then chuck all of the uh, all the bots and all the stuff you might be waiting you wanting to use into the uh, roboport and the um, a yellow chest up here and then it's basically a case of just sit back and wait for the bots to do everything uh, yes okay there's linking up the railway lines as well but um, that's, again it's, it's mostly just sort of throwing things out and then letting again letting the bots build it all up and then traveling backwards and forwards a few times to, um, to bring out all the extra supplies you need because you realize you've forgotten or you haven't taken out enough enough solar panels or enough belts or enough miners or whatever it is and then it is basically just letting the outpost build itself. You do need to put a little bit of um, attention in to make sure the chest doesn't fill up. But then you've got your your nice shiny new outpost like this. You've had a train come in to drop all the um, all the all the ammunition off, and it will just then it just essentially runs itself, it's nice and easy. There've also been a couple of other things I've done. One of them is I finally got around to building artillery, as you saw from the uh, from the building up that mine. So I've, I've got a train with that on, which I can send out to wherever I need to in the base, and it'll pound any um, any biter bases into oblivion. Uh, that's 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 fantastic. It's um, making things a lot easier. I was also also the other piece of feedback was that it was a suggestion that I should start looking into um, into core mining, which is where you have a massive mining drill that produces a mixture of all kinds of resources out of the um, out of the surface, out, out of the uh, core of the planet, and so I've done that to an extent. I've built one of those up here. That was relatively straightforward. The problem is that they take an enormous amount of power. So when I turn it on, it, it, even with these sort of massive banks of solar panels I've got, it's still it's not really enough to power it reliably and to keep the rest of the base ticking over. And there's the same problem here with the um, this umbrella defense system, which will protect me against any kind of coronal mass ejection, so I don't get that sort of roving fireball like I did in the last, um, a few episodes ago. 
But these two things are both very, very power hungry, which is why I've whacked in this switch here so I can just turn them off and not have to <laughs> not power them. So that's led me to thinking, well, in that case, it's probably about time I started to think about nuclear power. So in order to get that up and running, over here, I've uh, finally started working with a uranium mine. To get that going, I've got um, a couple of trains in here that are dropping off, in theory, sulfur. I don't know why that one stopped. That one should be okay. Um, and iron as well. So those are being fed up here. It's turned into sulfuric acid. That's being pumped out here. And also going down to another station here. So, oh yeah, we've got sulfur, sulfur iron, and then sulfuric acid here. So if I, so later on, I can have um, another, so take sulfuric acid off to other uranium mines and that sort of thing. So then the uranium's, uh, sulfuric acid over to the uranium mines. That's coming up, sorted. And then here we've got it being processed by the um, by these uh, centrifuges. And I have finally managed to get the, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, Coverex enrichment working. And it's, it, and it's produced more than enough to keep itself ticking over. So I need to come up here and put in some more of these centrifuges at this point. Uh, now, for anyone who's not actually done this bit before, when you uh, centrifuge uranium, you get something like, uh, oops, what's the recipe? Let's see what it says. Is it this one? Yes, here we go. 99.3% of the of the time, it'll produce um, it'll produce uranium-238, which is the dark green ones, and then 0.7% of the time, it'll produce the light green one. And the light green one is the the good one, the one that you can turn into bombs and into um, into nuclear fuel and so on. Um, so it there's not really, as you can see by this belt, this is this is the output of um, the whole of the whole system. And there's one there's one two three five there. We'll hit two three eight. What did I say? Yeah, 235 is a good one. So there's one there, there's one there, there's another one there. So there's a tiny smattering of them. And that means basically when you first start making, start processing uranium, you have a, you need a massive load of these centrifuges like this, pro just processing it all as fast as you can. And then you're dumping most of what they produce into, into some sort of storage medium like this, in order to just get it out of the way, and collecting up the... Um, collecting up the, the 235 until you've got enough to run the enrichment process wherever that is that's this one which because you need 40 of them for that but once you've got 40 of those you're essentially turning three of the 238s into another 235 and so that way you can relatively quickly start boosting the amount of it you've got and now i've got so there's 81 in there plus the ones that are currently being used so i've got enough now to run at least three of these machines Everything, please stop getting blown up while I do this video. <laughs> when I finish, I'll, or in a moment, I'll send the artillery train down here and blow up, blow up all the biters to get rid of them. In fact, let's do that now. I want you to go there. Actually, let's not go there. Let's go there, just in case I've made a mess of the um, unloading things down there. And I want you to wait until I have no passenger present. That'll do, because I'm going to do this manually. Okay, what was I saying? Yes, uranium. So I need, and you need to get through at least. You need to make at least 40, and then you can recirculate it like like this, and it'll it'll um, then produce what, as much of the 235 as you need, and you can then start going off and actually using it. So that's yeah. It's um, I've got to that point now. So it's now I'm now ready to go in there and start making bombs and nuclear power and other use, other fantastic stuff like that. The artillery though is um, also pretty good. As you can see, it's now lobbing out shells, blowing up all the biter bases. The downside of this is that just after blowing up their um, their bases, they tend to all then flood over and attack. Um, and so you have to hope that your defences are good enough to deal with that, because they'll all go charging towards wherever the artillery train was, like this. And this tends to be in larger quantities than the normal um, random attacks that happen just because there are too many biters in an area and they're feeling the population pressure so <laughs> so if anything is going to do um to stress my um yeah this is going to be bad i was going to say if anything is going to stress test my uh, defenses it's going to be this bit but this is especially bad um because there aren't enough, cut enough turrets down here i should have reinforced this before i started but it looks like we're probably going to be okay the, the worst of the um, attack is now through. Probably going to lose that turret as well. Oh no, no, that one got away, got away with it. But there's enough turrets in my um, in the supplies there that I can just that they can just get replaced. It's not it's not the end of the world. 
I can, of course. So the the artillery has a, a relatively limited range. You can you can probably maybe just about make out this red circle here. That's the standard range of the artillery when it's in automatic mode. If I get out my artillery remote, I then have a much much longer range, so I can take out fighters to a much greater distance. Um, I don't know whether it's really worth it. This 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 base is going to cause attack, so let's do some let's do some damage to this one as well. This one's in inside the uh, pollution range, so it's going to be picking, absorbing quite a lot of pollution and turning it into biters. So we, we'll um, we'll wreck their stuff as well, and uh, I've, uh, possibly wasted a few shells there, but never mind. They're relatively cheap. So yeah, it's, it's quite easy to wreck the uh, the bases like this. Oops, already done that one. <laughs> Did I get that one? But then, of course, you get the massive flood of biters pouring over, and I've, I've actually I've got a decent number of um, turrets on this side, so I should be all right. That's inside my. Oh no, it's not. That's not inside my um, uh, robot port range. So what I've done here is I've because I built this before I started doing the um, the exactly one robot port system. It's not quite inside the uh, all inside the robot port catchment area. However, they're attacking down here, which is is defended by the robot port, so that's going to be okay. Wow, no, no casualties. Excellent. Right. So that covers uh, the most uh, my my uh, recent changes. There haven't been any major leap. Well, no, that's not that's not remotely true. There've been quite a lot of major leap forwards. One of them is the artillery train, which um, allows me to just go in and destroy the biter nests fr from a distance very very easily. So that's that's extremely valuable, as you saw when I was building this iron mine. I've got nuclear on the way, so we're, we're harvesting the uranium. It's being processed and, and refined, so that's that's good. That's running well. I can I need to go in and make some some, some, some tweaks to that, so it'll go a bit faster again now. So it's got to this point, but it's going well. And I've built these these two things. They're as I say, not doing anything at the moment, but they are they are there. And so once I get nuclear power up and running, I can I can run them flat out, and it'll and everything will be great. And and We'll see. I, this, these these um, drills do seem to produce quite a lot of stuff. So as you can see here, it's um, is there a time on there? Yeah. So it's pretty expected to produce 11.3 of those core gym things. Uh, which one's this? This one. Core fragments per second. Um, and so that's about. And then I can t use that in in a pulverizer. I can then turn that into well all of the stuff you can see there. So that's going to get me quite a lot of extra stuff, and I'm then just going to need to worry about sorting it and passing it off to the right places. I can build more of these, but the more of them you have, the lower the um, the, the the less effective they become. So they, they become slower e each each one. So you can't just plaster the entire surface of the planet with them, or you can, but you don't get all as much stuff. So um, maybe I'll go for two or three of these. We'll see, we'll see how, how it goes and how much stuff is being produced. But I'm then going to need to feed that out to some sort of sorting system and then to a load of pickup trains here that will take it off to where it's actually useful. But that's that's okay. I've, I'm, I'm used to that sort of system from my Angel Bob's run, which was very heavy on that sort of thing. Um, it even produces oil, I think, which is interesting. So we'll um, yeah, we'll get that get that running and we'll uh, see how see how it goes. And I don't know what I'm going to do with the water actually that comes out of this. That's, we'll have to. Um, have to see. But that can be my next project, I think. That and getting the uh, nuclear power and nuclear everything else up and running. So, thanks for watching. I hope you'll join me next time when I'll uh, hopefully have some of that up and running and we'll talk about it then. Thanks for watching. See you next time.